Hi, and welcome to Crafts with Ash. My name's Ashley, and today I'm gonna bring you five Kirkland's Christmas dupes. So when I saw these projects, I knew that I could recreate them, but add my own colors and my own style to each one of these pieces. First, if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, then hit that little notification bell so you can get notified anytime I upload a new video. Then hit the drop down menu and click all so you're notified about all notifications. All right, let's get started with these dupes. Let's dupe it. <laughs> So for this first dupe, I'm going to start off with this family box sign. And this is just me being picky here. You don't really have to do this if you don't want to. But what I want to do is remove the staples and then glue the box back together just simply so the staples weren't there. So I used literally every tool I own to go ahead and try to pry up those staples. Of course, I couldn't find my needle nose pliers, which would have been the correct tool. But hey, you do what you got to do, right? So finally... I just took my little scraper and I popped it underneath and then I just went around the entire under like the top part and I just pried the top off of it. And then I kind of used different tools to go ahead and get those staples out. So I'm just going to go around, get every single one of those out. And like I said, you could skip this step if you wanted to. This is just kind of me being picky, I guess. So as you can see, uh, the one end of the box fell off. So... I'm going to kind of sand that down and then I will re-glue all of it back together. So now I'm able to pop the back off and then that pink plaid paper there, that actually just slides right out. So I'm just going to remove that and then I'm going to take out the staples that are left in those little pieces there and I'm just going to simply pull those out. And then I'm going to start hot gluing this box back together. So even though it looked, this looks complicated, it really isn't. I just, you know, I just needed to take all these pieces off so that way I could basically reconstruct it. So I just used hot glue and glued each piece back on the board. But as you can see, I actually did it tag side up now so that way the tag was on the inside of my box and not facing up because we're going to use the box part like the the like as a I guess a little stand and then I'm just going to hot glue this second side down now you do want to make sure there's like brown finish on one side and not on the other it's just the MDF board so I did have to make sure that the brown finish was facing out and then I'm gonna add my last piece here. And for some reason, I did not glue it perfectly back together, but it, whatever, it was good enough. All right, next I'm gonna take my Nutmeg Apple Barrel Paint and I'm just gonna paint this entire thing. I'm gonna get the top, the sides, and you can see that there's still holes from the uh, staples. That actually kind of worked into my, my design here. I wanted to paint this to look like wood and they kind of looked like notches that would be in wood. So I actually really liked how that came out. So like I said, I'm going to paint the entire thing. All right, next I'm going to take these letters that I got from Walmart. And you only need a J and a Y, but you know what we're going to spell. So they are wrapped, so I did have to remove the plastic. And then I'm going to paint each one of them with my crimson chalk paint from Waverly. Now... I also, on these, made sure to paint the sides of the letters as well. And I only did one coat. That seemed to cover it really well. And again, you want to get all of the sides, the insides, the tops. Just make sure it's completely covered. You don't have to worry about the back. Although, you might want to worry about the back. Depending on where you're going to display this, and that will make more sense in a minute. <laughs> Thank you. 
So while those letters were drying, I took these three candle holders that I got from the Dollar Tree, and as you can see, there are images on it. So I just took some 100% acetone and a paper towel and wiped it off, and this worked like a charm. It came it came completely off. As you can see, it's totally getting rid of all of um, or of the lettering and the pictures on these glass little votives. And I got these ones because I couldn't find clear glass ones. Obviously, if you can find clear ones, you want to get those, but I couldn't find it. But hey, this worked perfectly. So this saved me from having to go to $1,000 trees <laughs> to find them. All right, so next we're gonna assemble our little piece here. So I did line up all three of my little votives, and what I'm gonna do is simply hot glue the letter um, in front of the votive. So I'm gonna put one letter on each. So I'm gonna do the J on the first one, and then of course do the Y on the last one. And I am hot gluing at the bottom and then wherever it touches at the top too. Then for my O, I'm going to use a little strip of garland that I had left over from last year and I'm going to give it a little haircut so it's not so crazy and wild. So right here I'm doing it under the camera and then in a second I'm going to move it over my trash can. And then once it is all uh, cleaned up, I'm going to twist it in an O and I just twisted the ends around itself and then I'm going to hot glue that in front of the middle votive. Now, I totally meant to take off the tags or the stickers underneath each votive, and I'll go back and do that, but you may want to, you, you know, you might want to do that too, because you can see them. So I did have to hold these pieces there for a minute while they dried, but this hot glue worked, worked great with glass. And then I just made a little red bow with some little uh, red ribbon that I had and put that at the top of my garland wreath. Okay, so I apologize, but I kind of lost footage here. I didn't realize I wasn't recording, but I'm just showing you how I distressed this to look like wood. So what I did was I dry brushed some ivory chalk paint over it, then I went over it again with the nutmeg, and then I added some darker streaks with the Waverly Antique Wax. So now I'm going to use that ivory to distress the letters. Now you'll see in the Kirkland's piece, they are just bright red, but of course you know me, I have to have some rustic touches. So I did just decide to uh, brush over these letters with that ivory chalk paint. So I really love the little touch that that added. I thought that it made, oh my gosh, I thought that this, that made this piece look amazing and distressing that, that board too. And then once that was done, our little piece was complete. Woo. All right, now here's the Kirkland's piece. They're selling it for $16.99, not bad. That's what it looks like, and I, I love it, but I totally thought I could dupe it when I saw it. So, what do you think? This next DIY is really easy. So I'm starting off with one of these fall square signs from the Dollar Tree. Now, ideally I would have liked a rectangular sign. I just don't have any. I'm gonna have to remember to get some when I see them. But this one will work too. But the Kirkland's original piece is a rectangle, I believe, but this worked out just fine. So I went ahead and pulled out the hanger on the back and then I pulled off the staple, sanded it down. And now I'm gonna apply a good layer of Mod Podge all over the back of my sign. Now technically this could be a reversible sign because on the other side there was a um, Thanksgiving uh, like saying or whatever and then this is going to be Christmas so really you could use it for both. And now once I have my good layer of Mod Podge on I'm going to take this peppermint striped paper and this came from Hobby Lobby. You're going to see me use this paper a lot this year because my uh, stockings actually match this paper. So I'm gonna make decor to match you know, my stockings and it's also my Christmas skirt too, uh, tree skirt. So yeah, you're gonna see me use that a lot. 
So after I pushed it all down, make sure it was all adhered, I went ahead and trimmed around the edges and I'm just giving it a rough cut. If I'm not getting super, super close to the edge, that's okay. I'm just making sure that I cut the excess down and then I'm gonna take my sanding block and I'm gonna sand in the down direction around all of the edges to go ahead and give it that nice clean cut. Real quick, I wanna take this opportunity to welcome you to my YouTube channel. If you're new, thank you so much for stopping by today. I truly hope you enjoy what you see and stick around with me for a while by hitting that subscribe button. If you're returning, you already know you're awesome. I love you and I appreciate you. So thank you so much for coming back and I can't wait to show you even more festive DIYs. All right, so after my board was sanded down, I'm gonna take this printable that I honestly, I just Googled Joy to the World sheet music on Google, and I just printed it off, and now I'm gonna use my paper cutter or my paper trimmer to trim it down. I don't want like the white border showing, so I need to make it a little smaller. And then I am gonna go ahead and actually cut off the title of the song too. And what's really neat is the words are on the sheet music obviously too so you'll know what song it is so i'm just going to go ahead and cut this down next i'm going to take a piece of green cardstock and i'm going to put it in the corner but i'm going to place it so there is a border around it and then i'm going to apply a good layer of mod podge to the back of my sheet music and then i'm going to press it down again in the corner leaving a border around uh, that one corner around it and then I'm going to take my paper cutter and cut off the other sides leaving the border. Now you're going to see in the Kirkland's piece my uh, design or my um, scrapbook paper is completely different than what you'll see but the concept is still the same. There's this buffalo check, black and white buffalo check. I'm not really a black and white buffalo check girl so that's why I'm using paper that I you know actually like and will actually display in my home so that's the beauty about doing these dupes is you can make them you can create them to match your style so now I'm going to put a nice layer of Mod Podge on the back of the green paper and then I'm going to place that in the middle of my my board I do want to make sure that all the sides are pressed down, so I'm going to go through, or glued down. So I'm going to go through and just kind of apply Mod Podge where I need it. Then after that, I made this decal on my Cricut. It says Joy to the World. So I'm just going to simply place that in the middle of my sign. And then I'm going to uh, scrape it on there using my little tool. And then I, off camera I did add a hanger using the nautical rope. I did that as an afterthought uh, because I thought that I, you know, I should probably add a hanger to it. <laughs> so, but I thought this came out super cute. So here's the Kirkland's piece, $79.99. And again, they use the buffalo check and the red, but the concept is pretty much the same. But you tell me. What do you think? For my third dupe, I'm going to be using these color your own uh, little trees that come in the pack for kids to do, but you know, we can use them too. And I'm going to use two of them for this project. So the first thing I'm, I need to do is actually I need to add like a little trunk to each one of these trees. So to do this, I'm going to use a jumbo craft stick that I picked up in a pack from Walmart. And I'm going to cut two of them down or cut two pieces, and then I'm going to sand them down to just kind of make them a little bit more straight. And now I do want both of my trunks to be different sizes because I want the trees, one tree to be taller than the other. So once I have my piece cut out, I'm going to use some hot glue and hot glue it right underneath the tree, right to the bottom of the tree. So as you can see, I'm, I'm, 
cutting the other one a little shorter and then I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to hot glue that one to the bottom of the tree. Now for this DIY, I'm going to be actually using the back of these trees, so I'm not going to use that that side, but I am going to put hot glue around the back too, and then I just felt like it needed a little bit more support. So I'm cutting two little pieces off of the jumbo popsicle stick, and then I'm going to hot glue that over the tree and the trunk on the back just to give it, just to hold it a little better. And that seemed to work. They are still standing. <laughs> so that's good news. All right, so next I'm going to take this Christmas plaid, uh, Christmas paper, <laughs> scrap or scrapbook paper, and I'm going to trace one of the trees on the paper, and then I'm going to cut it out. Now, I'm going to do this to both. I'm going to use two different types of scrapbook paper, but I'm only going to show you one because what I do to one, I do to the other. So I'm not going to bore you with showing you <laughs> how I cut, you know, Christmas trees out of paper. All right. So this is the second piece. So I've already cut that one out. Now I'm going to use my Mod Podge again, and I'm just going to apply a good coat to my tree. And then I'm going to cover this with a scrap of paper and as you can see I also cut out the stem as well or the uh, trunk as well of the tree so I'm just going to make sure to push it on really well get all the edges so nothing flaps up or comes off and then I'm going to do the same thing to the other one as uh, as well so again, I'm just going to apply a nice coat of Mod Podge. And then stick my scrapbook paper on. Now once they're both glued down, I'm going to take a nail file and I'm going to use that to sand off the excess paper. This nail file worked perfectly because there's a lot of little spaces that my sanding block would not be able to get into. So I I love using a nail file for situations like this where there's just little areas or tight spaces. And this worked out great. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand this down. And then I'm gonna also sand the other one down as well. Next, I'm going to take my Waverly Antique Wax, and by using a makeup sponge, I'm going to go around the edges of the trees because there's wood showing, and I'm going to uh, rub some antique wax, and I'm also going to brush some onto the front a little bit as well. You can see I'm kind of going on the tips of the tree and then going around the uh, bottom of it and then the top, the star. So I'm just going around the perimeter of the entire tree and I'm going to do this to both as well. And then I am going to go a little bit on the inside too. I really wanted these to look rustic. And I do think that they 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 turned out rustic too. All right, so after that, I need a stand. So I had this stand left over. These were from some pumpkins. Uh, for fall time and I took one and cut it in half. Now as you can see there's a lot of glue in there. So what I did was I took my hair dryer to heat up that glue and then I just used different tools to just basically get the glue out of there just to pick it all out. So what I'm trying to do is just clean that up a little bit before I actually put the trees into the stands. And I'm going to do that with both stands of course. All right, so after that's done, it's time to hot glue our tree into the stand. So I put some hot glue at the bottom of the trunk and then some on the back and the front where the trunk meets the stand or is, it goes into the stand. Now, if you don't have these stands, you can use a couple tumbling tower blocks, glue them together, paint them brown and use those. Those would work perfectly. If I didn't have these, that's what I would have done. So as I'm looking at these, I'm like, eh, one is not like the difference in height was not as much as I wanted. So I went ahead and took the red tree off the stand and I cut that stem or the branch, uh, the trunk, sorry, down a little bit. And I liked that a, a lot better. And then I went ahead and just hot glued it back into my stand. So now there's a, a major height difference and I love that. 
All right, so now I'm gonna take two of these little wooden stars that I got in a pack from Dollar Tree this year. I was so happy to see these. And I'm just gonna faux stain these by using a baby wipe and dipping it in my Waverly Antique Wax and just rubbing it all over my stars. I believe in the Kirkland's it was like a blue and a gray and a red color scheme, but again, I added my own touch on this because I wanted this to match the decor in my home. So I'm going to go ahead and rub that Waverly chalk paint all over, and I did make sure to get the sides as well. And then I decided eh, I don't really want that star on the top of the tree, so I just used my scissors and cut the top at a point to a point at the um, at the top of the tree and that worked out perfectly then I did take my Waverly um, antique wax and hit the sides of those and then I'm just gonna simply hot glue my star on the top of the tree so cute then I'm gonna do the same thing for the other tree as well so I'm gonna cut the top to a point and it doesn't have to be perfect because this the star actually covers it. And then I'm going to sand it down a little bit. Now I did forget to go over the sides of that one with the antique wax, but then I just hot glued the star on top. All right, next I'm gonna take my big supply of these colored round beads from the Dollar Tree, and I'm picking out all of the red ones and pink ones, and I am making sure to get a bunch of different sizes of these too. Then you'll see that I actually have to resort to some orange and yellow because I didn't have enough, but I did 17 of these, 17 of these beads. After they were all on my skewer, and I put these on the skewer because I thought that maybe it would be easier to paint them. So I'm going to take my crimson paint and I'm going to paint over all these. Now you're probably thinking, uh, Ash, why are you painting these? They're already red. I didn't really like the shiny red and they were kind of too bright, but I really like the crimson red. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint all of these beads. And like I said, I definitely wanted to get different sizes of the beads as well. So I wanna make sure that they are fully covered. Next, of course, you know I got to antique them, so I took that makeup sponge and I'm going to brush that Waverly Antique Wax all over my beads to give it that little rustic touch. Then I'm going to take them off of my little um, skewer and I'm gonna take some twine and I did add some hot glue to the end of it to kind of make it, you know, bring it to a point. And I'm going to just start threading all of my beads on that twine. So we need two different strands of beads here. I believe there's seven on one and ten on the other I'm not entirely sure but it just depends on which wood trees you use too so I am going to thread these on and what I'm doing as I'm threading them is I'm making sure to put different sizes next to each other and then I'm going to test it so what where these beads are gonna go they're gonna hang underneath that first little like flap out, I guess. So I'm just making sure that there's enough to cover the front. Then I'm gonna tie a few knots, two knots on top of each other, push my beads down to the knot, and you can see that that's gonna cover it. Then I'm gonna cut the other end, tie my knots, then I'm gonna hot glue the twine to the back of my tree. So that way the beads hang around the front. Now, here's a trick to this. You don't want to put your knots right next to the beads. You want to make sure to give it a little slack for when you bring the twine around the back. So then I'm just going to apply a lot of hot glue and hot glue each end to the back. And then that little strand is finished. So then I'm going to take my twine again and I'm going to thread the rest of my beads on that and do the same thing. Yeah, there's seven beads on top. 
yeah, sorry, I was counting. <laughs> There's seven beads on top, so that means there must be 10 on this one because I'm pretty sure I painted 17 all together. So again, I'm going to mix all the sizes, and then again, I'm testing it. Now, I'm not going at the, like, little indent uh, directly below, but I'm skipping one. All right, so then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to tie the knots. Once I have all my beads on, I'm going to tie the knot, push it all the way down, cut off the other side. I think I add a bead here, too, because I felt like it needed it. I might have add, yeah, I think I did. So I'm going to add one more bead, and then I'm going to tie that knot, wrap, take it around back, and I'm going to hot glue them to the back of my tree. See, so you want them to hang, and if you do it too tight, they kind of like flap up a little bit. I hope that makes sense. It's like too tight, and they don't hang nicely. So that's why I said you don't, you want to give it some slack on either side too. All right, so once that second strand was on, this first tree is done. So now I'm going to go, and I'm going to pull a bunch of green beads, and I believe I, oof, I don't know how many green beads I did because I mixed in some other beads as well. So I, I know I had 17 altogether. So regardless, 17. So after, okay, so I did seven green beads, but I do know I go back and paint more of them because I, I wanted more. But I'm just giving this a coat of the Christmas tree, um, I think it's called Christmas tree green paint from Apple Barrel or Christmas green, something like that. All right, next I'm going to take some of my 16 millimeter wood beads and I'm going to put them on the skewer and I'm going to faux stain these. And to do this, I'm again going to take a baby wipe and dip it in some Waverly antique wax and then I'm just going to rub it all over my beads. So yeah, I wanted for this second tree, I wanted the variation of beads because I thought it would be a nice contrast to the, the plaid on the other tree. I loved how these came out. All right, so now I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to, oh wait, nope, I'm sorry. First, I'm going to put the green beads back on and I'm going to add some Waverly Antique Wax on these to give it that rustic touch. I forgot, of course, can't forget about that part. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm just going to start stringing my beads. And again, this time I'm going to mix and match sizes and color. So I'm, And if two of the colors were next, same color were next to each other, like you see two greens, that's okay. I was okay with that. I didn't want it to be so uniform and matchy-matchy and, like, alternating. So I just did whatever I, you know, wanted to do. So as you can see, I only have two green beads left, so I do end up going back and painting more and adding them to my little stack of beads here. So then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to tie the knots and then hot glue this to the back of my tree. And I am going to do, you know, that first little indent and then the third indent. So I want to know down in the comments, what colors do you decorate with for Christmas? Are you the traditional red, white, and green? Are you the blue and white, like more wintry? Are you the silvers, the golds, um, orange? <laughs> no. Uh, what do you, what style or what colors do you decorate it with? This right here is the perfect example of what I decorate with. I do do the reds the greens and the whites. However, it's not so bright. It's very rustic. So I do the naturals, you know, like the antique or like the um, stained wood type of, of thing. So that's exactly how I decorate. It's more rustic, but I can't get away from the traditional. I love the red, white, and green. All right. So now I'm going to work on the second strand. I'm going to add all my beads on that. And I'm going to speed this up because you've already seen me do this several times. <laughs> So then I'm going to tie my knots 
And then I'm going to hot glue that to the back. And then after that's glued down, these trees are done. All right, here's the Kirklands. Like I said, they went with a, it says red and blue plaid wood. A set of two for $49.99. Kind of pricey. But you tell me, what do you think? For my fourth dupe, I'm going to use this gift bag from the Dollar Tree, and I absolutely fell in love with this. Again, it's that whole red truck. If you're a red truck lover, you're going to love this DIY. But the first thing I did was take out the little handles, and then I'm going to cut the front part of this bag off. So I only need one, um, like the, the front of it. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut that off. And I'm going to get as close to the edges as possible because I don't want like the fold, if that makes sense. And there are two holes because of the handles, but we're going to fix that in a little bit. So don't worry about that. All right, next I'm going to take my big paint sticks. And these are the big ones from Lowe's. And it will take one pack of three. And I am measuring down because I'm going to, I need to build a frame for this. So I'm just placing my boards on and then just marking where I need it to go. Now, I did end up cutting these at an angle. So you're going to see me actually go back and kind of remeasure this. But I'm, for now, I'm just, this is like a jumping off point. All right, so then I went to my miter box and saw and I, like I said, cut it at an angle. So then I had to go back and actually, um, Remeasure. So what I did was the one that I had cut at an angle, I used that as a guide and you can see I'm placing that over the bottom one and then I'm just going to draw a slant, you know, draw a line where to cut it and then I'm going to flip it over to the other side and do the same thing and then I'm going to do that going all the way around until I have all of them traced out. Then I cut down, cut all my pieces and now I'm going to sand the edges to make them nice and smooth. This is actually my first time building a frame like this and cutting things at an angle. So I, I really, I mean, that was the best method I could come up with with how to make sure all my measurements were correct. And of course they were not, so I'm going to fix that too, but you know, it is what it is. Then I've got to clean up all my sanding stuff with my little ladybug vacuum. All right, so now I'm laying this out again. And this is where I realize there's kind of some gaps in between, of the, in between the corners, but that's okay. Like I said, we're going to fix that. So I'm just lining it all up. And I don't know how I did that because I measured, but that's okay. Everything can be fixed. <laughs> And then once I had the frame positioned how I wanted, I am going to remove one of the pieces, add some hot glue to each end, and then I'm going to carefully stick it back in without moving the entire thing. And I'm going to do that going all the way around. I would re maybe recommend using wood glue. I do not have any. I, I, I know I bought some. I can't find it. I don't know where my wood glue is. So I just decided to go with this. See, because as you can see, it kind of fell apart. But then, you know, but at least some of it stuck together. So at least I had some of it glued. So, and then I realized that if you, I hold it together for a little bit, that it'll stick better. So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to finish gluing it all back together. And like I said, I am going to apply some pressure there so that way it adheres. And it's pretty sturdy, I have to say. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Now to add more support, I did cut little pieces of craft stick and I'm going to hot glue one to each corner, connecting the two pieces. So this really helped too, to keep it together. Now I'm gonna add my fourth one. 
and there we go. All right, so now to fix the gaps, I'm gonna take some Dollar Tree spackling and I'm just simply going to rub it in the gaps in between my corners. See, that was a big gap. I don't know how I did that. <laughs> I promise I measured, you watched me do it. <laughs> All right, so then once my spackling was dry, I'm gonna sand that down so it's nice and smooth. So we can move on to the next step. So this was a really easy way to make a frame. I looked for a picture frame at the Dollar Tree, but it was I couldn't find one that was big enough for that gift bag, so I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna make it. All right, so now we're gonna make this look like a window. So I'm going to use dowel rods for this, and all I did was stuck the dowel rod in the window and then measured it down. Then I'm going to use my miter shears to cut the dowel rod. Now, typically miter shears are great for this, but my blade is actually broken. So I'm doing my best here. I need to get, I need to see, you can see right there my blade is broken. Um, I need to buy a new blade, I just keep forgetting. So I'm going to cut two of those long ones down so they fit going up and down on the inside of my frame. And then I am, after I break it off, I am um, sanding it down so it's nice and smooth. And then you're gonna see that these slip right in and they are nestled right in there. Like they are tight. I don't think they're going anywhere. And if I had a little bit of wood kind of sticking out, I did use my little knife there to cut it off. And then those just went right in. So these are like, I guess you would call them the window panes. I think that's what they're called. <laughs> and these are the ones going up and down. So now I'm trying to get it as straight as possible. Now we have to do the ones going across. So the easiest way I could think to do this was just to do three different pieces going across. So I already had like the piece left over from what I cut from the one going up and down. So I just went through, I measured as I went and I just made sure that they were just, you know, nudged right in the middle or where they needed to be. So now that one's in and don't worry if they're not, if they don't look lined up, I do go through and line them up. You can see that I'm using that other dowel rod just kind of as a guide so they're straight. And then I'm just gonna go through and I'm going to cut. So you need nine of these pieces all together but you can't cut the same size. At least in mine, I couldn't because the like three sections were not the same width. I hope this is all making sense. <laughs> I know this kind of looks tedious, but I promise you the end result ugh, was totally worth it. I loved the way that this one came out. Love, love, loved. All right, so like I said, I'm just going through. I'm cutting all my pieces, sanding them down, making sure that they are nice and smooth and that they wedge right in. And even if there's like a little, tiny little gap that's okay because I am going to end up hot gluing these in so the hot glue will kind of fill that gap a little bit so now I have see I I couldn't just measure a bunch of those little pieces I had to do it like piece by piece and just measure and cut measure and cut so this is tedious, so let's speed it up a little bit. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna finish cutting and sanding and measuring all of my pieces. So then after I got those side pieces done, I cut two for the middle. Then I'm gonna fit those right in. Make sure that all of my pieces are straight, straight up and down and straight across. And then, like I said, I'm gonna take a little hot glue and I'm just going to dab. Now I'm gonna flip this over and you can see how wedged in those pieces are because they're not even glued in yet and they didn't fall out. So, I mean, they were, they're pretty tight in there, but I definitely wanted to go through and hot glue 
these in. And you can see I'm just putting a little hot glue, I'm just dabbing it a little bit. And I am going to go through. I wasn't going to, but I felt like it needed it. I did go through and do this on the front as well. But we're going to paint this so you aren't even going to tell. Like you, yeah. You're not going to be able to tell that it's hot glue. So now I'm going to go through. See, like I said, it, it, it kind of needed a little bit, the hot glue in the front. I can't wait till you guys see how this comes out. Oh my gosh. All right. So now that this window is all um, put together, it's time to paint it. So I'm just going to give it a good coat of Waverly chalk paint. Now, I did go through and give this two coats. I really wish I hadn't because when I went to sand it to distress it, it didn't really sand well because there were two coats. So in for me personally, because I wanted to distress it, I should have just done one coat, but you can do whatever you want. I did make sure to get the uh, dowel rods in there too, and then on one on the back, I flipped it on the back and painted it from behind as well. And then if any hot glue, I painted over that too. You know, I wanted that to blend in. So then once my window was dry, I took my sand paper and like I said, I did sand it, but it was kind of hard. I really wanted the natural wood to come through, but because I put two coats on there, which I, like I said, I shouldn't have, um, I really had to <laughs> apply a lot of pressure, but I did want to pay attention to the corners of my frame. So I'm just kind of randomly, I don't know, just sanding in one spot so it really came through. Then, of course, you know, I got to take my chunky brush and dry brush some Waverly Antique Wax all over my sign or my frame. And I am going to make sure to pay attention to the corners to make it look like they were chipped and this is chipped wood. And I am going to do the window panes, of course. Then I'm going to sand it down to kind of help it all blend in. And then after it was distressed, it's time to add our gift bag again. But here's how I'm going to show you how I'm going to cover the holes. All I did was cut two little pieces of the snow part. And I just Mod Podge that behind the holes to kind of camouflage them. Now I will say when this is standing up, you can see that there are two little pieces of paper behind there. But I think that, you know, I mean, I will. <laughs> it is what it is. This is just the only way I could think of to hide the holes. So then once I got my holes hidden, I went through and I hot glued this to the back of my frame. Now for this, I really had to watch the positioning because it says happy holidays up top. And I kept kind of uh, cutting it off. So what I did was I laid it down, tacked it one corner down with hot glue. So that way I could flip it over and it wouldn't move. And then I used hot glue. I ran it all the way down each side and hot glued it down. So I actually got that tip from Liz Moore and I saw her do it. I don't know if she purposely did it, like if it was intentional, but I was like, oh, that was pretty smart because then she was able to flip it and it didn't move. All right, so next, I'm, I have this strand of lights, and they're actually ghosts, but you can't tell, and I really love the white um, lights in this. So I'm just going to go through and hot glue these little ghosts down all over my, my gift bag. And I try to cover all the area, all the, like the whole surface, and then I'm going to hot glue the battery pack. Now, I always like to put it off to the side, and of course, you want the little uh, on-off facing up and the screw facing out, and after that, this sign is done. All right, so here is this one uh, from Kirkland's, $49.99. This one's gorgeous, and it lights up too, but I have to say I love mine. What do you think?
All right, it's time for our last dupe. And we're gonna start off with this galvanized bucket that I got from the Dollar Tree in the summer. And it is perfect how it is, but it did have words on it. So to get rid of the words, I'm going to use some 100% acetone and a paper towel to go ahead and get that off. And it rubs off so easily and so nicely. It's like they weren't even there. And then this bucket is exactly how we need it. The only thing we have to do is take off the handles. And that was very easy to do too. I just bent them down and then gave them a little wiggle and then pulled them right off. So I took off both of the handles and then I put that to the side because that is done. All right, next I'm gonna take a piece of this cardboard. Now this is flimsy cardboard. And this actually was at the bottom of that gift bag that we cut up in the prior DIY. So all I'm going to do is cut off a little strip. And then I'm going to use that as a guide to cut another little strip. So we need two little strips. Now, I don't know how big these strips are. I did not measure. And the, <laughs> if you've been following me, you know that I don't measure anything because I'm just bad at measuring. So um, I just eyeball everything. So then I'm going to use my paper cutter to go ahead and cut that other strip. Then after that, it is time to paint these. So what I'm gonna do is use my mocha, I think this is called like light mocha or something, uh, apple barrel paint. I'm gonna paint both of these with that. Now, I should have painted the back of these as well because I realized you could see them in the DIY. I do go back and paint the back after it's already put together. So I would just recommend if you're gonna do this to do it at this point. And then to kind of give it that basket weave wicker, whatever you want to call it look, I did go ahead and distress over it with the Waverly Antique Wax. All right, so now I need some little pieces. So I'm going to just use a, a regular size craft stick and just cut off little rectangles. Again, I don't know the measurements because I don't measure, but I did cut out six. So I'm just going to use that first one to as a guide, and then I'm going to trace that and then cut out my pieces. This is your friendly reminder that if you are loving what you see so far, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Not only does it really help my channel to grow, but it tells YouTube you love what you see and you want to see more. So smash that like button. All right, so then I realized that I needed to cut out more, so I'm just going to cut a few more out. All right, next we are going to paint these. So I have to galvanize these. So to do this, I'm gonna paint each one with the steel chalk paint from Waverly. And we're gonna speed right through this. <laughs> Cause I'm gonna do the same thing to each one. And then after, well, I guess it wasn't completely dry, but I did go in with a kitchen sponge and dab some black acrylic paint all over each one of them. And I love doing this method. I love making things look galvanized. I, it, to me, it's just fun to do. So then after I went on, went over it with my black, I took my white and did the same thing. I'm going to go over each piece with that. Then I'm going to go over it one more time with that steel paint to dull it all down. And I think that that makes it all come together. Then I'm going to take my Waverly Antique Wax and just kind of randomly dab on these pieces. I'm not going to dab over the entire piece, but just like in the corner, maybe a little in the middle, just to add that rust look. And I'm going to do that on all these little pieces. All right, now it's time to assemble our, our little bucket. So what I'm going to do is just use hot glue, and I'm going to hot glue these strips on the top of our bucket. And I'm going to hot glue both of them so it's all the way around the top. Now, personally, if it weren't for the dupe, I would not have even add these, added these strips. But when you see the original piece, you'll see why I had to if I wanted to create a true dupe. But I don't know. It didn't turn out exactly how I wanted. And I think it's because I didn't have the right material to do this part. But I think it came out close enough. If I'm far away, honestly, I think it came out really close, actually. <laughs> but you'll see. <laughs> so I'm just going to finish gluing that. I'm going to cut off the excess there. 
and then I'm gonna start gluing those galvanized pieces on. Now, what I should have done, and I didn't even, it didn't even occur to me, was glue one of those pieces over the seams where those two strips came together. I didn't even think about that. So I just randomly glued them around there. But first, this is when I noticed, oh shoot, you can see the inside, and then I went through and I painted it. So that's why I say you just want to paint it, paint the back, you know, when you're originally painting these, these strips. So I'm just going to go through and just paint the inside. All right, now I'm going to randomly glue those little pieces on. And I did end up doing three on each side. So I put one in the middle, one on one side, and one on the other because that's what the original piece looked like it had. And then I'm going to do that on the back as well. All right, next I'm going to take some nautical rope and I'm going to cut off two little handles. Now, I should have used this one to measure a second one and I always forget to do that. <laughs> but I'm just going to hot glue that. Glue one of the handles on this one side. Then I'm going to do the same on the other. See, like I said, I should have used one of those little galvanized pieces to hide the seam, but oh well. It's on the side. You can't really see it. So then I just measured that one that I already glued and cut out another piece. And now I'm going to do another handle on the opposite side. And I'm going to hold it down for a little bit. That way it fully adheres. And then I'm going to cut off any excess rope. All right, now we're gonna add one final touch. I printed off this tree from my Cricut, so I'm just gonna add that to the front of my bucket, and now this bucket is complete. All right, now this actually comes in a three, a set of three for $79.99. Obviously, I did not do three, so that would make sense. <laughs> but, you know, from far away, I really love how it came out, but what do you think? I am absolutely in love with how each one of these DIYs came out today. I have to say, even though my pieces don't look exactly like the Kirkland's piece, maybe because the Kirkland's piece wasn't my style, so I you know, created them to match my style, I still think they came out pretty darn close. You're going to have to let me know in the comments which one was your favorite. I definitely have to say this piece right here with the joy candles and the window were tied for first place. But then I also like those little trees. I guess I do like the silver bucket. I don't, I'm not really sure. I don't know. I guess I love all of them. But like I said, you're going to have to let me know down in the comments which one was your favorite. Are you going to be recreating any of these looks or you know, what are you planning on doing for Christmas this year DIY wise? <laughs> and also don't forget to tell me how do you decorate for Christmas? What is your color scheme? I would love to hear everybody's ideas and visions and what you have in store for this holiday season. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you got a lot of great ideas and were inspired to create some festive DIYs for your home for this Christmas season. If you haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you love what you saw. And hey, be sure to check back for more Christmas decor ideas coming at you real soon. Well, until I see you again, I'll craft with you soon. Bye!